Good evening. Households will feel the pain as Treasurer Tom Kutsantonis hikes up taxes and sells off assets in his budget debut. He says it's to offset federal cuts, but Canberra says Labor's to blame. Political reporter Tom Richardson joins us now. Tom, is it the expected horror budget? Well, it's certainly very, very tough. There are painful measures we can see, but more worryingly, there's the promise of pain to come. The budget includes more than $300 million of savings. Tom Tonus admits he has no idea how to fund and he'll have a dialogue with the electorate first. But he might not find voters very receptive. This year's budget deficit has blown out to $1.2 billion. But incredibly, Labor continues to claim it can turn that into a modest surplus within two years. That will be on the back of the usual hikes in fees and charges, with public transport users and drivers both feeling the pinch, plus water bills will rise by almost 3%. But for homeowners, that's the least of the hip pocket hit, with a massive hike in the emergency service levy to cost households hundreds each year. Pensioners and concession holders will be exempt, but they won't be shielded long term from cuts to council rate concessions. A simple pitch. What we've done is fully funded all of our election commitments. But that claim itself could be creative accounting as key poll pledges fall victim to the budget acts. A $100 million upgrade of the Flinders Medical Centre is off the cards, along with other suburban hospital revamps. The money to be held over in a health capital fund. It's not prudent for me to go forward and keep on spending money on the Flinders Medical Centre or the QEH. And the on again, off again electrification of the Gawler rail line to Salisbury is still on, but delayed yet again. The perennial whipping boy of successive budgets has now been held over till 2020, with only 60 million of its $150 million cost to be spent in the next four years. A pledge to avoid privatisation ringing hollow too, with the Motor Accident Commission to be sold off, leaving compulsory premiums in private hands. I understand the cynicism that some people may be seeing about this, but the reality is I think the private sector can do it better than, than the government. While the rest of Labor's election platform is intact, there's plenty of pain to be shared. The Treasurer effectively imposing a new tax by dramatically increasing emergency services levy contributions. Owners of property with a median value of $450,000 will be slugged an extra $150 a year. This is the only measure that I have that I can levy on people uh, who pay more as they have more valuable assets. Commonwealth pensioner concession cuts will be passed on after a year. Labor determined to emphasise who it wants voters to blame. I want to see Matt Williams and I want to see Andrew Southcott and Chris Pine go to the community groups that I go to and tell them that cutting their concessions is a good idea. Australia's last Labor government's determined to pin its budget nasties on Tony Abbott's federal cuts, which it says total almost $900 million. After the new levy, rate concessions ripped out and a raft of other spending reductions have flowed through, that still leaves $332 million the Treasurer admits he doesn't know how to recoup, even though he's budgeted for it. What are the options? Closing a hospital. Closing a hospital. Closing a hospital. Um changing the way we fund elective surgery, increasing waiting times for elective surgery. Um, Cut, closing a government department, you said? Could be closing a government department. The coalition insists after 12 years of state labour, it's not to blame. True to form, uh, labour uh, is always uh, looking uh, around for somebody else to blame for their failings, but this is really uh, their own failing. Now, we had a deal, and that deal's gone, and everything I've shown you in this response to the essay their budget response to the Commonwealth budget, I'm happy to tear up if they tear up their budget. 